Hello and welcome into another episode of Lockdown Wolves, an Anthony Edwards career high, 51 points in the Wolves comeback win over the Wizards on Tuesday. We'll talk about the whole thing here today on the show. Welcome in. You are Locked On Wolves. You are Locked On Timberwolves, your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Lockdown Wolves podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Beek and I'm the host of Lockdown Wolves. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Lockdown NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy Hump Day. And uh, it is a victory Wednesday and a big Wednesday with the Wolves taking on the Nuggets tonight in Denver. We'll talk a little about that at the end of the show here today, but I want to celebrate the Ant 51-point performance and and some of the positives from what was a pretty, um, we'll call it shaky performance for much of the game against the Wizards on Tuesday. So we'll break down all that here today on the show. A big thank you off the top for making Lockdown Wolves your first listen every day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere. That includes YouTube as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. Wherever you like to listen to podcasts, you can find Lockdown Wolves. You can also watch on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. And you can follow on X at Lockdown T Wolves and also at B Beacon with two B's, two E's, C K E N. And a reminder about postcasts. Of course, we go live with a postcast on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota YouTube channel after every Wolves game. It's usually uh, Luke Inman and Jack Borman, the editor in chief of Canis Hoopus. They'll be live tonight after Wolves Nuggets. Also a reminder about the Minnesota basketball party. The next episode in your feed on this audio feed today on Wednesday will be the Minnesota basketball party. Um, I'm actually hosting today along with Ron Johnson of the Ron Johnson show, Reggie Wilson, the sports anchor at care 11 and uh, Jack Borman uh, again of Canis Hoopas. I'll be hosting the show today, typically hosted by Sam Ekstrom with myself as one of the panelists, but that is every Wednesday, usually posts on YouTube and the audio feed midday here at lockdown wolves. All right. Let's talk Wolves and Wizards from Tuesday. Of course, the headline is the Anthony Edwards 51 points. And the funny thing about this performance is that, well, it was phenomenal and well-rounded and one of the better overall individual performances of Anthony Edwards' still very young career. It wasn't like an onslaught, right? It wasn't like he had one quarter where he completely dominated. And obviously, his second half was better than the first. And he was really good in both the third and fourth quarters. But it was never like oh man, he's got 28 in this quarter and, you know, he's going to have a monster night. It wasn't quite the same as, you know, Carl Thitty Towns 60 plus point game a few weeks ago in the loss when, you know, it, it was kind of building and he was having an incredible start to the game. And it was like, man, everything is going to go through cat. This was almost like if there's such a thing as a methodical, I wouldn't even, I don't think you can score 51 and call it quiet. So it's not a quiet 51 point performance, but if there's such a thing as a methodical 51 point performance, I would say this was it. I mean, 29, 51 points on 29 shots is ultra efficient. Now, I, I, like, and actually Chris Finch after the game in his post-game press conference said something to the effect of, uh, how did he say it? He said a performance, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but the, the key point was that a performance like this isn't about volume, Was the is the is the thing I want to point out. He said it's about efficiency, and it was incredible efficiency. And... Chris Finch, as most head coaches, any good head coach is, is all about efficiency. And he's been preaching Anthony Edwards. It's, it's, you know, why Finch doesn't like the tough mid-range twos, right? He was the coach of the Rio Grande Valley uh, Vipers, you know, 10, 12, whatever many years ago when they were the extreme test case for the Houston Rockets of shooting all those threes. Like, that's how Chris Finch would like to play. Obviously, this team doesn't play that way all the time. They don't shoot that many threes. But Chris Finch doesn't like mid-range jumpers, right? It's one of the reasons why guys like Nas Reed fit in really well with what Chris Finch is trying to do. Um, Ant likes shooting mid-range jumpers, but in Chris Finch's world, those are only okay if he's also getting to the basket and also shooting threes and, you know, and by getting to the basket, getting to the free throw line. And Ant earned himself, you know, like he shot, I should also say, he's not just shooting like 19 footers, right? Ant gets into the paint and shoots 10, 12 footers. Sometimes they're really tough. Sometimes he goes glass when he shouldn't. Sometimes they're contested and they're turnaround, you know, uh, fadeaway wrong shoulder jumpers, but he's still really good at making them. 
And if he's also shooting some of these really efficient shots, you can get away with them. And it also, it's another tool uh, in the toolbox to keep the defense unbalanced or off balance, I should say. So anyway, the 51 points on 29 shots was super efficient for him. Obviously 17 of 19 shooting, excuse me, 17 of 29 shooting is incredible. He was 11 of 16 on two point attempts in this game. He was six of 13 on three point attempts. And he was a perfect 11 of 11 at the free throw line. It, that's about as perfect of a shot distribution as you could possibly get. It really is. I mean, 13 threes. Uh, did I say, what did I say? Uh, yeah, 13 threes, 16 two pointers, 11 free throw attempts. It really doesn't get much better in terms of his shot mix. And if you look at his shot chart, I mentioned those non paint twos. He only attempted three non paint twos in this game. He missed all of them, by the way, but only three non paint twos. He attempted, um, and I'm just I'm just looking at the at the shot chart that came out right after the game. So let's see. Outside of the restricted area, he was six for six on paint twos outside the restricted area. Six for six on ba- so we'll call it basically three to twelve feet inside the paint. He was six of six. And he was 0 of 3 on non-paint twos and 6 of 13 outside the arc and really, really good as he always is around the basket and also was getting whistles in this game, which is, which is obviously that was really what allowed the Wolves to still, they were down 10 at halftime and the Wizards were shooting over 60% from three. The Wizards actually had more three-point makes in the first half of this game than they averaged for entire games this season. Then like their, their per game average, I guess is a cleaner way of saying that. Okay, so more threes in the first half for Washington than they average per game this season. Now, the Wolves get to the line like Washington fouls a ton. I mean, that's uh, they're not a good team, period. They're a really bad defensive team and they're, you know, bottom like eight in the league in terms of opponent free throw rate or defensive free throw rate, if you will. Um, And that was huge in this game. That's how the Wolves were only down 10 at halftime because they were just crushing Washington in the free throw category. They ended up winning at 32-17, but it was something like 24-4 to or something at halftime in terms of free throw attempts. And uh, I mean, like, that was the biggest thing in this game. And I thought it was pretty fairly officiated. And honestly, the Wolves could have gotten to the line more often. The Wizards were, clearly their game plan was, and understandably so, because they were severely undersized in this game. Severely undersized. Like, they didn't even really have any didn't have any centers playing like Anthony Gill, I think is like six, nine. And he was the biggest guy on their team that, 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 that played in this game. Who's effectively playing center for 36 of the 48 minutes. And when he wasn't on the floor, they didn't have anybody that was, you know, could play center in the big 10 in terms of size. Right. It was, uh, and, and, and the wizards, their game plan was to muck up the game was to be physical and, and be like, well, Hey, they can't call all the fouls. Like there was one play where Jaden McDaniels was under the basket. This is, I think like third quarter, and whoever was guarding him literally had both arms wrapped around his waist and was pulling him and they didn't call the foul. And after the like two passes and the play ended in a different foul and Mike Conley went up to the official and was like doing like show like doing one of these like, hey, his arms were wrapped around him, which you don't see Conley complain like that, um, especially on behalf of a teammate. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Just Mike doesn't complain that much. And so when he does, you know, it's he's probably right. It was just like. But, but it was those types of plays like they're not going to call it every time. Right. And and that's it makes sense to me, given how bad they are defensively and how undersized they were. So I'm not criticizing the Wizards and I'm not necessarily criticizing the officials. The Wolves still had a plus 15 advantage at the line. I just like that's just what was happening in this game was they were trying to be as physical as they could, given how undersized they were. And it also led to the Nas ejection in the first quarter, right, with the elbow to uh, was it Davis's? Uh, no, it wasn't Davis. Who was it? Um I can't remember who it was. The el- it might have been Davis. The elbow to the head of the Wizards player, um, which to me that was a flagrant one, not a flagrant two, whatever. But there was also that moment where Rudy got upset when he was landed. You know, somebody fell into his knee. The Wizards were trying to be physical. They were they're young. It's a bunch of guys trying to prove themselves. So like I get it, um, and that made this game difficult for Minnesota. It's a lot different than what Wednesday night against Denver is going to be. Just a different vibes, a very different type of opponent. Obviously, different caliber of opponent, but. Um, the, the scrappy playing hard and a little too physical and, you know, they're not going to call everything attitude of the wizards is not what the wolves are going to see against Denver on Wednesday. All right. A couple more takeaways from this game. We'll do studs and duds. We'll talk briefly about the Denver game on Wednesday night. All that's upcoming here next. 
Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our friends at Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. I'm a huge baseball fan, and uh, early in the season, it's tough to get to games, but uh, especially with the end of the basketball season and playoffs upcoming, but as a last minute buyer, a frequent last minute buyer, Game Time is the best place you could go and not feel stressed about getting the best seats to the games you really want to go to. They have priority last minute deals. Save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. cetera. Um, I go to all of the above. I love sports, obviously, but I also love going to concerts, comedy, and my wife's got me into theater a little bit. So I'll go to any of any of these entertainment venues and game time is the best place to go to get the seats. They have all in pricing views from your seat, a lowest price guarantee game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use the code locked in NBA for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem the code locked on NBA L O C K E D O N NBA for $20 off download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Do you watch Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? If so, no doubt you have to turn down the volume with all the shouting. Make the switch to Lockdown Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Lockdown Sports today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so some additional takeaways for Wolves Wizards. Um, I talked a little bit about the Wizards game plan of trying to muck up the game, be physical, et cetera. And the Wolves, frankly, struggled in the paint early in the game. Um, the way Minnesota got down, I mean, they were down at one point by 21. They were down 18 at the end of the first quarter because they gave up 44 first quarter points to the Washington Wizards, who even after this game are a, t- a bottom five offense in the league. OK, and this is without obviously no Tyus Jones, no um, Rashawn Holmes, no um Oh my goodness. What's his name? The, uh, uh, completely blanking on former Laker, uh, Kyle Kuzma. There it is. No Kuzma, no Rashad Holmes, no Tyus Jones. And I mean, like the only NBA rotation guys are Jordan pool. Who's obviously, uh, pretty up and down. We'll call him Corey Kispert. That's kind of probably it. Um, I, I guess Denny Abdia, you know, is a rotation guy. Still has a bit of upside, but like this wizards roster somehow dropped 44 against the wolves in the first quarter. Now, part of this was they were shooting lights out. The wolves were missing open threes. And I actually thought the wolves for the most part were getting good looks and they were doing it without even getting penetration. They weren't even really getting into the paint, which was a bit of a double-edged sword because they were getting such good looks from the outside. It was like, all right, they're just open every time and they're shooting threes. They're just missing them. But on the other hand, the wizards are so short-handed and they foul so much that you're just screaming at your TV, like just get into the paint get to the rim, force the issue, and it didn't happen in the first quarter. The Wolves still scored 26, but the Wizards were so hot defensive or offensively, and the Wolves were, um, they allowed too much penetration. They didn't dominate the glass in the way that they should early in the game. They ended up a plus three in the glass and only giving up seven offensive rebounds to to Washington, which is fine. Um, But, I mean, Washington shot 46% plus from three for the game, 20 of 43. A lot of that was early. Kispert kept finding himself open. Jordan Poole hit some tough shots later in the game. He took some tough shots that he didn't make. Um, You know, they had uh, uh, a couple guys that don't make threes ever make threes in this game. So it was just one of those games early compounded by the Wolves missing open shots from three and also allowing a few too many easy forays to the rim for the Wizards offensively. So it's an 18 point game at the end of the first quarter. At one point, a 21 point game, I believe it was early in the second quarter. And, um, it like again, it was a combination of all of those factors. And in general, I still don't think the Wolves did a good enough job in the paint in this game. It like paint points aren't going to be the best way to measure this because the Wolves did get to the line, what, 34 times? So I said 32 times in this game. So the majority of that is initiated by getting into the paint, right? In terms of straight up paint points, the Wolves were a plus 10. And as I mentioned, they were plus three on the glass. So fine in those categories, right? That's that's um good enough not where you'd like it to be against a shorthanded team that wasn't good in the first place an undersized team that wasn't good in the first place but it was good enough in this game 
One of the things I was worried about in uh, that I mentioned previewing the game on Tuesday's show was uh, Washington's pace that they play with. They're number one in the league in pace. Uh, and, well, they're, again, not efficient offensively, and they're missing, what, three of their best four, three of their best five offensive players. The Wolves are still a plus eight in fast break points to this game. Part of that was turnovers. Washington turned it over 13 times. The Wolves got 22 points off of those turnovers, which is super efficient, especially for the Wolves, who, as we've talked about quite a bit on the show, don't push the pace enough after getting steals. They did that in this game, which I was worried about and, and I thought would be playing, playing with fire a bit because the Wizards want to play with pace. They want to create some higher variance situations. They want to be more aggressive to create more offensive chances for themselves and their own inefficient offense. The Wolves would generally prefer to slow the pace down. But the Wolves pushed it after steals in this game. 22 points off 13 Washington turnovers, and Minnesota only turned it over eight times themselves, which really limited the opportunity for Washington to push the pace. And sure enough, the Wizards ended up with only 12 fast break points in this game. So really good job dominating those categories for Minnesota. Um, I was surprised. Now, part of that was because they were down by so much, it became like, hey, we, we do just have to push the pace. It also led to some nice three-point opportunities, which is one of the reasons why I always think the Wolves should play faster in general. Now, it's obviously somewhat opponent dependent, and I would say this about the Wolves more than almost any other team. Um, because Minnesota's half-court defense is so good, in general, they're happy to play slow, right? But they've also got the personnel offensively to be able to play fast. And it was one of the things I thought they should do sans Carl Anthony Towns, and they did. They have played faster without him on the floor. We've talked about that before on Lockdown Wolves. Uh, but even with him, with Cat as a trail, you know, uh, trail three point shooter, the Wolves have the athletes and Anthony Edwards and Jaden McDaniels and Nikhil Alexander Walker and, um, you know, on down the line. They have, and Nas Reed, they have the athletes to run in the open floor and both finish at the rim and enough playmakers that they can generate some open three point opportunities in fast break situations, too. So it'll be interesting to see how they pick their spots when the game inevitably slows down in the playoffs. The Wolves can run if they need to, or can run if it's if it makes sense to. And this was one of those games I was worried about it, but it ended up being an important piece of Minnesota getting their offense going, which was a little sluggish early. Again, more just about missed open threes than anything else. But it was important as the Wolves made that comeback. You know, they got it from 18 to, I think it was an eight-point game at halftime, or excuse me, 10-point game at halftime. And then um, ultimately, you know, had a 15 point lead before garbage time started in the final couple minutes. And, and then the wizards dominated the last minute and a half of garbage time to make this a nine point game. Um, so all that to say some categories, I thought the wolves surprised in, in this game, uh, if nothing else. All right, let's close by looking at individual studs and duds. And then we'll talk briefly about the nuggets game on Wednesday night. All that is upcoming here next. Today's episode of lockdown wolves is brought to us by our friends at BetterHelp, the show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest, big or small. Certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let it out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So today I want to say how I really feel about something. You might even be thinking about the same thing this week, and that is Chris Fitch's Coach of the Year odds uh, over at our friends on FanDuel. Uh, I was, I'm surprised that Chris Fitch still doesn't have better Coach of the Year odds, and I get that there's been a lot of guys, a lot of coaches that have, have been incredible this year. Um, you know, you look at like, uh, just going on down the list here, like obviously Dagno, it, but minus five fifty. I don't understand. SGA is one of the top, what, six players in the league. So Dagno at minus five fifty on FanDuel is at, at Finch second at plus six fifty is kind of crazy to me. Um, I know it's great, but SGA is one of the best players in the league. He's a legit MVP candidate. Of course, this team is going to be in the conversation for the top seed in the West. I'm a little, I'm, I've been a little bit disappointed in the discourse surrounding Chris Finch. Now, of course, therapy can look different for everyone. And many of us have bigger problems than just complaining about NBA coach of the year odds or, you know, whatever related to your favorite sports team. But still, like I said, it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking of starting therapy, consider giving BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash lockdown NBA to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on NBA. All right, let's talk individual studs and duds from Wolves Wizards on Tuesday night. Uh, obviously, Anthony Edwards. 
said a lot about him off the top, but we'll I'll repeat the crazy stats. 51 points on 29 shots. Seven assists, six rebounds. I didn't even talk about his playmaking earlier. I should have. Seven assists to just two turnovers. And in the middle of a game where Ant was seeking a career high and trying to drop his first, you know, 50 plus point game, Ant was still making the right play. There were very few four shots from Ant in this game. His pull up threes in transition, they're almost always good shots. Almost always. Occasionally, the you know, where the momentum's going and and you know, whatever, it's it's not always, or sometimes with the way the floor balances, Ant's pull up threes are a bit iffy, but they're usually good shots. So I'm not not those. Just in the half court, sometimes when teams are loading up on him, sometimes he puts his head down and makes the wrong play. That did not happen. I don't think really at all in this game. I can't think of a time where I was like, ah, not a good shot by Ant. It was, well, it was a, as I called it, a methodical 51 points. It was a, uh, well, yeah, I mean, this goes with methodical, right? Like a, a well, a well played methodical 51 points. Like the seven assists, I'm actually surprised he didn't have more. He had a couple of really nice passes late. There was one for a Nikhil Alexander Walker corner three. Uh, there was another one for a three point attempt from Jaden that didn't go down, but easily could have. And it was the right pass by Ant. He was making the right read. 95% of the time in this game, 51 points on 29 shots and still seven assists to just two turnovers, six of 13 on threes and a perfect 11 of 11 at the line. And he pitched in six rebounds for good measure. A really, really strong Anthony Edwards performance uh, in, in this game. Can't say enough about the development of him as a playmaker. And, and really, while he showed the ability to do it, especially last year and earlier this season, it's just become more frequent. It's become a more regular occurrence for him to just have a really strong playmaking performance we saw that again in this game. Uh, I'm also going to give Rudy Gobert one. I thought he was part of the problem early in terms of the defense, uh, you know, giving up 44 points in the first quarter, but he was not, it wasn't solely his fault. And then he was great the rest of the game in the paint. He had four blocks, 19 and 16, 19 points on five of nine shooting, a really solid nine of 13 at the line for Rudy, which was nice to see. Um, that's what, like just a shade, it's right around 70%. Like good to see him shoot like that from the line, getting closer to the playoffs. Uh, like I said, 19 and 16, five offensive rebounds, three, three assists, two steals, four blocks. And with Nas going down early with the ejection in the first quarter, they needed Rudy Gobert to be physical and effective in this game. I mean, Luca Garza didn't play Kyle Anderson actually didn't play all that well and wasn't the beneficiary of Nas being ejected. The Wolves just played small because the wizards were small, right? So there was no need for Garza. And they decided, hey, between Jordan McLaughlin and Nikhil Alexander Walker, like let's keep two of McLaughlin, Alexander Walker, and Conley out on the floor at all times, basically, is what Chris Finch decided. And so they needed Rudy to be strong inside, and he was. Um, so really good game for Rudy as well, Sands, you know, or or taking out some of that first quarter. Nikhil Alexander Walker is the other one, and he might have been the Wolves' second best player on the floor in this game. Uh, 23 points on nine of 19 shooting. He was piping hot in the first half at one point, four of nine outside the arc. He had five assists, two, uh, excuse me, five assists, four rebounds, two steals, two blocks in this game, and just two turnovers in 31 minutes, despite having the ball in his hands quite a bit. And I mean, talk about a guy that's played really well here uh, recently. He had 15 points in the win against the Lakers on Sunday. He had 13 in the loss to the Suns in a game where the Wolves really struggled offensively. He was three of five from three. And he had 14 with four made threes against Toronto last Wednesday. So over the last week, over the last four games, uh, well, actually, let's do this. Going back to the Houston game eight days ago. So for the month of April, he's shooting over 50% for three. Um, just just incredible shooting the basketball. And he's doing more than, than that, right? He's had the ball in his hands more often. He's uh, like, he's shot quite a few mid-range jumpers where he's pump faking for the corners and shooting a baseline mid-range jumper, which, you know, as I said earlier, like, is that really part of the Wolves offense? But I don't know that he's missed one. Like, he always makes them. So, like, it's just his feel for the game is so good. Um, Alexander Walker's is. And I don't know that I felt that right when the Wolves acquired him, you know, at the deadline last year. But certainly he's comfortable now, and that's a big part of it. Uh, but he scored a double figures in his last four. And overall, in six of the last nine games, he scored in double figures. He's been really, really good. I mean, you could go back really the whole season. I mean, it's just more volume here of late, and he's he's gotten hot from three. But he's been really strong all season long, and he was phenomenal in this game. By the way, he was a plus 27 in this game to kill Alexander Walker was. Um, I'm going to shout out Jordan McLaughlin. He was great. He played 25 minutes. Monte Morris only played 12. McLaughlin played 25. He had six points, seven assists, and zero turnovers which is vintage Jordan McLaughlin. He didn't make any threes, which is weird. 
Um, only O of one outside the arc, but a really good game from him. And uh, also Mike Conley, same deal. 15 points, 5 of 11 shooting, 5 of 9 from 3. He was hot early in this game and, and hit a couple big shots early in the second half. Uh, really, really strong performance from Conley as well. My only dud for this one is Kyle Anderson, and I actually don't think he played that poorly. It's just he had one point in 26 minutes and also only had two rebounds, three assists in this game. Just a quiet slow-mo game. Duds may be unfair. Um, but, you know, I, like, Carlton Towns is about to come back. His role shifts a little bit once again. Kyle Anderson's does. So just a bit of a quieter game from slow-mo. But overall, uh, you know, there weren't really many bad individual performances. It was just the first quarter was a bit shaky. But beyond that, uh, this this turned into a nice performance for Minnesota, certainly in the second half. All right. Um, Wolves, Wiz excuse me, Wolves Nuggets on Wednesday night. And... I don't know. I mean, this is this is rough, right? It's a back to back. Both teams are on a back to back, but the Wolves are traveling from Minnesota to altitude in Denver. Um, the Nuggets are six point favorites in this game, according to our friends at FanDuel. And um, I mean, the Nuggets, frankly, I mean, both teams have something at stake, obviously, right? They're trying to get the number one seed in the West. The Wolves do have the tiebreaker over Denver either way, but the problem would be not that it would be that the wolves would, because they have the same record coming in. Right. So the problem would be that the wolves, if they lose this game will be a full game behind Denver. Um, and so they would need Denver to lose one of their final two games, which are against, I'm pulling it up right now, but I think they're not difficult uh, at the Spurs and at the Grizzlies. So the Gri the Denver is highly unlikely to lose one of those last two games. Um, and the wolves would have to win both their last two games against Atlanta and Phoenix, which is tougher, right? So it's a big game for Minnesota because of that. Because otherwise, the only way you're getting the one seed is if Denver loses to Memphis or San Antonio and you beat both Phoenix and Atlanta. The Thunder are a game back. The Thunder have the tiebreaker over Denver, but not over the Wolves. So if the Wolves lose, they'll still be in second in the West, and they'll be a half game ahead of OKC. Well, actually, I guess technically, no, they would still be ahead of OKC, but they will have played one more game than OKC. Um, actually, I say that. I bet the Thunder also played tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look and see who they play. Uh, they play the Spurs, actually. So uh, Thunder Spurs and then Thunder Bucks, Thunder Mavericks. So the Thunder have the toughest schedule and the worst tie-breaking odds, uh, not odds, tie-breaking scenarios uh, You know, for them. So if the Wolves lose, there's still a pretty good chance they get the two seed, um, but they're almost for sure not going to get the one seed. So this is basically for the one seed, and then the Wolves still have to beat you know, at least Atlanta, but probably both Atlanta and Phoenix to securely get the two seed in the West. And right now, like, yes, the play is a mess, but you'd rather play any mix of Suns, Kings, Lakers, Warriors than the Pelicans or Mavericks right now. I, I mean, straight up like there's you don't want to play the Pelicans or Mavericks right now with the way those teams are playing and the way the Wolves. I, I know the Pelicans have struggled a little more lately, but the way the Wolves have matched up with with a Pelicans team with Zion on the floor, you'd much rather play. You know somebody in that plan tournament, but also getting to one would help you avoid almost for sure and avoid the suns, right? It's and the suns are a bad matchup for Minnesota and they've beaten them badly twice already. They've lost their last couple games since beating Minnesota Friday, but the suns aren't a great matchup either. We'll talk a little bit more about that actually on today's basketball party, but um, you'd rather face the Lakers, Warriors, or Kings, right? So if you get to one, you're very likely going to face one of those three teams. And that's what the Wolves are shooting for. So um, we know we know what the matchup looks like, Wolves Nuggets. We know that to this point in the season, um, you know, that matchup for Minnesota has been has been okay, right? Like grand scheme of things. When they were healthy, you know, when they when the Wolves were healthy, they beat the Nuggets, right? Like uh and then their their most recent loss to them, you know, without Carl Anthony Towns, like uh it, it changes things, right? It, just a couple of weeks ago. So, but then when they got Towns back, um, and obviously the Nuggets didn't have Jamal Murray, or sorry, not when they got Towns back, when when the Wolves had Rudy on the floor and they were healthy other than the Towns injury and the Nuggets are missing Murray, the Wolves won by 13 last time around. So it's it's in a series between the two in the playoffs, obviously Denver is going to be the favorite. That's going to be like, if you look at ESPN power rankings as of today, they've still got the Nuggets number two because they're the defending champs, right? I get it. However, I don't hate the way the Wolves match up with the Nuggets. Um, and, and you know, this isn't obviously a first-round matchup, but it's very possible the Wolves see them later in the playoffs. And, and so it'll be interesting to see how, like, I'd be surprised if Carl Anthony Towns plays in this game. My money is on, I think I said this on Tuesday, I would, I would bet Towns plays 
maybe Friday against Atlanta, and maybe he doesn't play Sunday uh, in the matinee against Phoenix. I'd be really, really surprised if he plays against the Nuggets on Wednesday. All right, uh, that's all I got for you today here on the show. Uh, check out the basketball party, your next episode in your feed. It'll it'll post the audio will post probably mid afternoon today on Lockdown Wolves audio, but on YouTube it'll be on Lockdown Sports Minnesota before lunch today. Uh, be sure to check that out, and then of course we'll have a post game pod tomorrow on the feed and the live postcast tonight with Jack and Luke on Lockdown Sports Minnesota. So tons of content coming your way as we as we careen closer toward the playoffs. Weird word choice, but it works. As we careen toward the playoffs. Um, Make sure that you have it here locked at Locked on Wolves. A big thank you for making Locked on Wolves your first listen every day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere. That includes YouTube as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. We can also watch on Locked on Sports Minnesota on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. And you can follow on X at Locked on T Wolves and also at B Beacon with two B's, two E's, C-K-E-N. If you can't watch the game live tonight, be sure to check it out on the on SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Minnesota Timberwolves. You can catch Wolves. Nuggets with our friend Alan Horton on the play-by-play. Again, the SXM app on Series XM. Just search Minnesota Timberwolves. Of course, the Lockdown Wolves podcast is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Remember, the Lockdown Network is your local experts on all the biggest stories. Once again, I'm Ben Beacon. This is the Lockdown Wolves podcast, and we'll catch you next time.